In this video, traders, we're going to look at trading the news with resting orders. Stay tuned. Hey, traders, a very warm welcome to you. OK, so let's just put this big disclaimer out there before we start. This one, if it goes wrong, can go catastrophically wrong. However, if you're managing your risk with small size, if you're doing all the other good things, then you and you accept the risk and you understand the risk. It's a, it's a trading strategy like any other out there. OK, so trading the news. Generally, I'm talking about news as in non-farm payrolls. I'm talking about interest rate announcements, all that kind of stuff, stuff that moves the market, stuff that's categorized red generally on your economic calendar, stuff that's categorized as heavy market movers, whatever. You know the stuff, not just the little stuff that never seems to do anything. Now, generally, when news comes out, it goes quiet, quiet, quiet. It spikes up, it spikes down, and then it does something else. It might go into a trend, it might go either way, it might go back to where it was, but you're often getting this little period of time here where it's spiking. So this strategy is to take advantage of that. Now, some of you are watching going, ah, we can get my face completely ripped off, and yes, I agree, you can. However, the idea is that you're fading these levels, so you're putting a resting sell short order at the high and you're putting a resting buy long order at the low the idea being the oscillations the kind of lack of liquidity the ping back and forth is going to get you long or is going to get you short on either way now let's just before we talk about the rules of this kind of stuff be aware that if something very surprising comes out this will just go straight through your short order order and you'll be significantly offside however the reason this potentially could work is that that is rare and the currencies where it just goes through your order and comes back are more frequent. So you're kind of flipping on its head from your normal strategy of, hey, I want to have, you know, loser, 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 massive winner. It's this kind of winner, 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 massive loser, almost like selling premium with options. You're going to get caught out from time to time with it, but you're kind of decision making process has got to be, hey, will I get enough juice out of it for the times that it has worked that will offset the time where I get a monster loser. Now, if you're trading something like an index or a currency pair, you know it's not going to go unlikely to go, never say never in the market, and never say that because always something can always happen unusual, but a thousand kind of points in against you within, you know, immediately. That, that's probably not going to happen. So you can quantify the risk to some level. All right, so we get the idea. So this is kind of the pattern that we tend to have when we're trading. So the question becomes, where the heck do you put these to make the most opportunity for profit? Now, you've got a decision to make. The wider you go, the less likely you're gonna get filled, but potentially the bigger the trade if it pings. Do you stagger orders and have lots of little orders kind of resting uh, buy orders there, which a little kind of go and as the market goes through it, it catches all of them and then comes back. That's my kind of preference for this trade, but where do you start that? So one thing you can do, if you go back and look at what's happened in your time frame you're looking at, I, I, your kind of uh, date you're looking at. So whenever you're watching this video now, go back and have a look and see the reaction generally to NFP, to uh, interest rate announcements, to a central bank announcement, anything that's kind of moved the market, flicked it around oil inventories if you're trading crude oil, and see where we've gone. Most of the time, well, I'm, I'm kind of being really generalizing here, but a lot of the time you're going to get markets take out days high and the, all the days low and then spring back. So one thing you could do is you could say, hey, if we're near the high uh, of the day and we've not had much of a range, I'm gonna kind of stagger short positions, short entries above the high. I'm gonna, not, let's not talk about risk management in this. You, you, can, you know it's risky, you either make your own decisions, whether you're gonna have a stop, whether you're gonna leave it, whether you're gonna have a hedge, whatever, I'll leave it up to you. Just understand that this could go really seriously against you. But let's talk about getting into this thing. You have a kind of levels above the high, it takes a few of them, comes back, and your idea is you know coming out back into a mean reversion type thing. So either the level pre-announcement uh, or you maybe take a few out and look for a further move to the downside here. Because very often you get that ping to the upside, ping to the downside, and if you've got a resting order in there and can get that kind of stretch, that kind of lack of liquidity, that spike in one direction, you're gonna get a very good entry. Of course, the caveat being that you have to offset that with the potential risk of it just flying through the highs, but there are ways of mitigating that. So that's one way of doing it. You either look through a level above the high or below the low, depending on where you're positioned, 
You can either do one or both. You can do both if you fancy it. You know, you leave two resting orders in and one counts the other or use one to take the profits on the other or just do one if you feel like we're near the high and it's going to spike and then come back. Um, or you kind of look at an ATR and you say, well, how, how much range have we had? And blah, blah, blah. You've got to use it based on your judgment. There's no point in, in kind of using a 30 you know, tick range here um, when historically it's done 300 because you will get filled, but you're going to be offside by 100 points plus, which doesn't make sense. You need to have it at a point where it's a 50-50 shot of being filled. You know, you want it so that it's close enough to be filled on noise, um, but not too far away that you're not getting filled. But then you don't want it too far away either because that's generally going to mean that it's a real significant spike and you might end up catching, you know, uh, on the wrong end of a runaway move. So play around with that. Have a, I say, I always like to look at, look just manually look at stuff. I like to look at the chart and say, hey, the last 10 F NFPs, it's done this, right? It's done X amount of moves. Hey, is it the most scientific way? Probably not. But at least you can say, well, you know, it's not approximately 200 point range here. Took out the high here. So if I was going to base it on that, which is only, okay, so only a sample size of 10 or whatever it may be, but at least it's giving you a sample size based on the current market conditions, give or take, you could say, well, actually the best place for me to have an entry would be here, 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 and then maybe adjust the style and strategy from that. So a bit of a different one for you guys, it's not your normal kind of pullback buy or your, or your support level play. It's something different. It's based around news. I know people who do trade news quite successfully this is something that you can maybe put in as long as you understand the risks of any trade it's worth looking at i think all right guys uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff don't forget to hit the subscribe button somewhere along here if you haven't yet already or consider doing so and i'll see you in the next one take care bye bye